So this is about the time we're starting to see articles pop up everywhere on The Athletic, on different rumor websites, all over social media, dissecting and analyzing every individual combination of player and trade destination. Today, we're going over to one of these pieces published on The Athletic by both Pierre Lebrun and Chris Johnston. This was from yesterday, and the title of the piece reads this, NHL trade matchmaker Lebrun and Johnson pretty much predict where these six top targets go by the trade deadline. The article, as you could clearly tell by its graphic, has a bunch of names that are listed as potential trade targets, and each of these insiders go out there and label who they think is going to trade for these players. Now, you read the title, you read the thumbnail, you saw exactly who it is we're talking about. This video is dissecting one of the ideas out of 12 total that are going to be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and read the piece yourself. Of course, it's behind the paywall, so we're not going to screenshot the athletic article directly. But if you go over to what the piece says about one, Pittsburgh Penguins star Jake Gensel, things get really interesting to acknowledge where they go from here. Gensel, just in case you needed the update, is 29 years old, 5'11", left-handed forward. He's a left-wing center. At least he's listed as that on Elite Prospects. He's making $6 million a year till the end of this season, and he is on an expiring deal. He's got a modified no-trade clause, so if he were to get traded, he has some say as to where he goes, and this season, Gensel is on pace for 95 points. He's got 38 points in 33 games played, pretty consistent comparative to the rest of his career because he's constantly been a point-per-game-ish caliber player. Last year, he had 73 points in 78 games played and 36 goals. The year before that, he had 84 points in 76 games and 40 goals. This season, he is on pace for another 40 goal year plus a career high in assists, so this is a pretty talented player still. It also gets better when you note that Gensel has been producing all these points on a Penguins team that doesn't really have anybody else producing much outside of Crosby, Malk, and Latang. I mean, that's a pretty constant pattern that we're kind of used to seeing with this Penguin squad, but realistically, you could say that a lot of these players have been disappointing this year. So, what exactly is the scoop here that is written about in The Athletic? Well, to help us out, we're going over onto an article published on HockeyFeed.com that uses a quote from The Athletic piece, because The Athletic is paid for material, and we're not going to screenshot that one by itself. Take a look at what Chris Johnston had to say in regards to Jake Gensel. If we're imagining a world where Pittsburgh is both trading Gensel and retaining salary, no buyer makes more sense than the Edmonton Oilers. This would be an elite level upgrade to a team already spilling over with elite forwards, and it would give the Oilers a natural shoot first winger who could play alongside of Dreisaitl. It's an intriguing thought. This is clearly another all-in year for the Oilers who have found traction after their early season struggles, but will need a shot in the arm in the second half. Now, we did talk about this yesterday in the Olivier Rodrigue and Jordan Binnington comparison video, but if you wanted to talk about the Oilers and their record, they actually are in the same territory right now as they were at this point in the season last year. So this team, for all intents and purposes, is doing pretty okay, especially when you consider in the terrible start that they had. They've been kind of shot out of a cannon ever since then. And so if you wanted to talk about the Oilers potentially making the dance and doing some pretty good damage in the postseason, it's not too much of an impossibility. Now, as we did note yesterday too, the West and the Pacific Division, it's pretty tight up there. Vancouver, Vegas, and LA are all doing really well in the standings this season, so for Edmonton to squeak into a wild card, it's going to be tough because that Central Division is super tight too, but it is possible. So if you wanted to say that the Oilers could get themselves a scoring winger to really help themselves out, add on to that top six, which includes the Nuge, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Kane, Hyman, then maybe Jake Gensel is your guy, a shoot-first caliber player who knows how to play with superstar centers. He's been playing with Crosby this entire time. I mean, making the switch from Crosby to Dreisaitl may not be all too big of a deal. 
In fact, having Gensel on the power play with McDavid too also sounds like a great idea, and it's one that I feel makes the most sense out of all the targets and combinations listed in the athletic piece. Of course, there are like the really obvious ones. They talk about Chris Tanev in Toronto, etc, etc, stuff that we've seen before. But this is the first time we're really seeing the Penguins forward getting linked to Edmonton, and... You know, just in theory, it's one idea that I like a lot. But, of course, Chris Johnson lays it out in the law and says, hey, the Penguins would have to retain salary, he would have to be making $3 million against the cap in order to get sent over to Edmonton, and if that is the case, let's say it's Gensel 50% retained heading over to the Oilers, what exactly is the return there? How much do the Oilers have to sacrifice to get a player like Gensel? We'd already seen a bunch of other rumors talking about prospects and guys they'd be willing to trade out for a goalie. Like, everybody talks about Lavoie, Borgo, Holloway, like you know, prospects the Oilers have in their system. Philip Broberg is still a trade ship that this team is looking to get rid of. Honestly, in my opinion, now that I'm thinking about it, the idea of sending Broberg and some other stuff away for Gensel doesn't make no sense at all. Because if you wanted to say that what Broberg needs is a Swedish defenseman who is offensively minded to show him the ropes and to allow him to learn what it takes to be this kind of a guy at the NHL level, sending Broberg to a team with Eric Carlson on it seems like a pretty good idea, actually. Like, for all the problems that Philip Broberg has had as a prospect, would it not make sense for Eric Carlson to be the name to really fix things up and to mentor this guy? I don't know, that's just an idea I thought up on the spot here. If you're a fan of the Oilers, let me know your thoughts as to whether or not you think the Jake Gensel conversation is one worth having. And if you wanted to go deep down into this, what exactly is the price you think would be appropriate to acquire this guy? If you're a Penguins fan, then what are your thoughts on Jake Gensel getting traded away? And do you think there is a suitable package from the Oilers that would make sense to you. Obviously, it would suck to lose out on a player like Gensel, who has been a very consistent and offensively capable guy over the past few years. He made his debut with the team, won a championship, he was great with the Pittsburgh Penguins, and he always has been, so there's a lot of room to grieve in the odd event that Jake Gensel does get traded away and the Penguins are not confident they'd be able to re-sign him, etc, etc, especially with the direction of the team. It's tough over there in Pittsburgh, man. Kyle Dubas has his work cut out for him. If he decides that the Penguins can go through some sort of a mini retool or a rebuild or whatever, just shed away the assets they're not sure they're going to be able to keep, then maybe Gensel does indeed leave. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're an Oilers fan, if you're a Penguins fan, what are your thoughts on Gensel over to Edmonton? Do you think this would be a fit with Dry Saddle? Do you think this would make sense? Chris Johnson does believe so. But of course, this is just one article out of many that goes out there and talks about potential potential trade candidates. I'll leave a link in the description to the athletic article as well as the hockey feed.com article because the hockeyfeed.com article published the quote from the athletic article behind a paywall without the paywall. So yeah, that's kind of the loopholes that we go through to make sure that this content is discussable on YouTube. Discussable? Is that correct? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire Jake Gensel to Edmonton idea. Do you like it? Do you not? Do you think there's a package here in a trade? Do you think there isn't? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.